Our next special report looks at AMD versus NVIDIA GPU market share, including interesting data on the most popular cards, most popular series for each brand, average selling price of video cards to consumers, and more. This pulls thousands of data points between fourth quarter 2016 and first quarter 2019 and tells an interesting story about the 1080 Ti, likely one that we won't witness again for a long time. It also speaks to the decline of AMD in the gaming space, where the company has struggled to make consistently appealing offers in more than one price category simultaneously for the video card market. This is counter to our previous report, where we looked at the Intel versus AMD sales data and saw an encouraging story of an underdog beginning to claim dominance in another market. That was the CPU report. For this one, the GPU report, the story is much different. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair and its Void Pro headset. The Void Pro headset is available in wired or wireless versions, with the wireless option supporting a boosted range upwards of 30 to 40 feet. The headset has full RGB LEDs on the ear cups, has 50 millimeter headphone drivers, and lasts up to 16 hours on battery. It can also be plugged in for wired use and is now lower in price than when it first launched. A noise canceling microphone is also included along with an easy mute indicated by an LED and you can learn more at the link in the description below. This report dives into again the sales data for Nvidia and for AMD since roughly end of 2016 until now and this is a different story from the one we saw with our CPU sales data. In that one the chart started with Intel and AMD very far apart and occasionally coming together but Intel overall was in the lead up until Ryzen, at which point a massive change occurred in what our viewers and readers were purchasing, and AMD now looks to be the one in the domineering position in the CPU market. So, uh, well, to clarify here, in the CPU market for our audience. So let's get that out of the way first. Uh, first of all, this data is affiliate data. We can look into what people who watch us and read our content purchase, and that represents only those people, only our audience, and basically the enthusiast audience, typically also an audience that tends to spend more money and is a DIY system building audience. What we can't see is things like OEM data, laptop sales data, things like that. So referencing back to the Intel versus AMD CPU one, Intel still has the lion's share majority of the, uh, the market. It owns really most of it in things like laptop, it has a lot of it in server, it's got a lot of market in OEM, and those are places where if you look at our data, it doesn't reflect the reality of those markets. But for the enthusiast DIY market, AMD has been doing well in CPUs. That's not the same in the GPU storyline, which is what we're looking at today. The difference here is that even though we're still, we still have the same ground rules, you can't extrapolate this across the entire market, for the most part, Nvidia does also uh, own basically every other market sector as well. There are places where AMD has some deployment, but it's just, it's not the same story as Intel versus AMD and CPUs. It's, it's much different. So uh, that's the reminder on what the data represents. We can't account for OEM sales, things like that. We are rounding uh, the results to keep the charts legible. So results will be plus or minus 0.5%, depending on rounding for those charts. And uh, overall, the most interesting thing to pay attention here is going to be the 1080 Ti. It's insane. If the 1080 Ti were a video card company, if, if you took the 1080 Ti and you introduced a third party company to the market and said, this is what they made, it would have dominated the market. Just that one card. Nvidia really had a, an incredible run with the 1080 Ti, and that's a big part of the storyline today. The 20 series is also accounted for in here to the extent that it's been out in the last couple of months. And then AMD uh, is, well, well, we'll go through their numbers as well, but mostly for the last few years that we're looking at, it was RX 480, 470 releases, followed by 580, 570, Vega, of course, was in there, 5664, things like that. So let's get into it. We'll start with the GPU sales analysis over time, then look into average selling price and the most popular series or card by vendor. Our data starts out in the fourth quarter of 2016, where we observed a steady uptrend in AMD GPU sales into the holiday season. The AMD RX 480 had just released around July and August and was driving up in sales for AMD. The 470 was also popular in this time. Nvidia and AMD reached parity in February of 2017, which we did see 
uh, lower sales overall in every single February that we've looked at. So this is an interesting side note, but not particularly relevant. And this is also around when the cryptocurrency prices started picking up just initially. Nvidia rocketed to over 80% sales volume in March of 2017, which is when the GTX 1080 Ti released. We could also postulate that the dip in sales for Nvidia the month prior was because there were lots of rumors about what would be released in March, and so sales slow down when rumors abound. That card, as an aside, has been more successful in sales than any of the other NVIDIA cards we've ever tracked. NVIDIA continued climbing through July of 2017, when mining began to go more mainstream and GPU shortages were just starting for gamers. AMD was sitting at nearly 0% sales volume in this period, not quite, but very close, with NVIDIA responsible for almost all of the sales we tracked to our audience. This didn't let up until November of 2017, when AMD sales gained in performance during Black Friday sales. Ever since then, NVIDIA has been positioned comfortably in the 85-98% to 98 sales volume range for our audience. The company saw a dip in November of 2018 when Vega 56 and RX 580 prices started to come down and Pascal inventory completely dried up, leaving only expensive RTX cards. Since then, though, the company has recovered much of its temporarily lost position. NVIDIA pushed a lot more releases in this period than AMD, and this isn't counting the onslaught of GTX 10 series product launches in July and August of 2016, nor the launches of Quadro cards, which also seemed somewhat constant. The 2016 NVIDIA onslaught again of cards was met primarily by two AMD cards in the same period, the RX 480 and the RX 470. The success and importance of NVIDIA's GTX 1080 Ti, again, can't be understated, as we'll see later, because it held the company over for more than a year while waiting for the RTX launch. Between the 1080 Ti and the RTX launches, we were met only with a few cards, like the Titan V and the 1070 Ti. Note that this is based upon thousands of GPU sales, so although we're limited to what our audience buys, this is still a lot of market share among the NVIDIA enthusiast crowd. We also, an important note, do cut out things that we can't see, obviously, like a lot of the Titan sales. We can't see things like enterprise sales for either company, and we also don't track too closely the Quadro or Workstation card sales. The average selling price, or ASP, is an important metric that plays into a company's gross revenue. It also shows where each company holds the strongest for customers. Unlike the Intel versus AMD chart, where we saw increasing constantly for the average selling price, especially for Intel, this one has had a downtrend in 2019. Nvidia increased in ASP from 2017 to 2018, likely thanks to that 1080 Ti sale that pulled about 55% of all 2018 sales volume for Nvidia, and placed NVIDIA at $619 ASP. 2019 lowered this to $543, which we found to be strongly correlated with the drop-off in 1080 Ti sales due to the depletion of inventory. More on this in a moment. AMD has remained roughly in the same range over the years, moving to $255 ASP in 2018 from $233 in 2017, then fell, falling back again to $241. The 2016 versus 2017 delta for NVIDIA is a result again, of the 1080 Ti, illustrating how important it was for this audience. Let's next look at a chart for the most popular series by NVIDIA. Our three-year average shows the chart on the screen now, keeping in mind that the RTX cards only launched more recently. Averaging the past couple of years of data, the 1080 Ti maintained about 35% sales volume overall, even when accounting for the rough 8% volume taken by the RTX 2080 or 5% by the 2080 Ti, and also noting that it didn't exist in the beginning of 2017. Note also that we can't see most Titan sales, as these tend to be directly through NVIDIA. After the 1080 Ti, the RTX 2070 is the most popular, and this is actually an interesting data point as well. This speaks to the success of the 1080 Ti and helps further illustrate the initial disappointment in the RTX launch, but shows that the 2070 helped recover a lot of this. And this was kind of what we said in our review too, where although the 2080 was disappointing for equating the 1080 Ti in a time when RTX games didn't exist yet, the 2070 did a lot to push the better value angle of NVIDIA's uh, argument as opposed to the 2080 NTI where the value was not good and also started to reach a wider audience. But uh, the 1080 Ti gave everything a, a lot to live up to. Breaking it down into series per year is also interesting in this chart. The usefulness of this is entirely related to marketing mentality and what the consumer wants to be associated with when buying a product. The 1080 Ti occupied 55% 
of all 2018 sales for NVIDIA that we tracked, and that includes some additional data we didn't have previously when we talked about this, that's a staggering volume for one card, especially with 20 series launching the same year. But because we rolled all of a series into each other, the 2080 Ti volume of 1% in 2018 and 13% in 2019 skew the perception you might have of price, hence breaking out ASP separately. The 1080 Ti was $700 to $800 on average. The 2080 Ti has generally been above $1,000. Either way, this allows us to see which lines our viewers prefer to associate with and uh, affordability notwithstanding. The ADTI series has fallen off in 2019, which is in large part due to the unavailability of the 1080Ti and painfully expensive 2080Ti cards. In their wake, the XX70 series has picked up steam, now exceeding 20% volume for NVIDIA. The 60 series also picked up some volume, along with the 80 series returning to its 2017 volume. We didn't know where the 1070 Ti or 1660 Ti belonged, so we broke them out separately. AMD's most popular series has remained the X80 cards. We left them individualized here as AMD had a lot fewer SKUs overall, which makes it much easier to sort the data on the chart. The RX 480 dominated AMD's 2017 sales volume via our viewers, reaching roughly 60%. That expanded in 2019 with RX 580 sales, especially with thanks to new reductions in price. Now reaching upwards of 80% of all of AMD's sales volume, the RX 580 is a staple for the company. After these, the RX 570 and 560, or even 460 cards, were somewhat popular over the years, but nowhere near where the XX80 series have been. We were surprised to see so much interest in Vega 64 versus Vega 56 as well, considering that 56 can be made to nearly match 64 performance with an overclock and can even be BIOS modded fairly easily. That said, these are enthusiast things. So this is the same as what we saw with the 1070 Ti versus the XX80 sales, and illustrates that people care more about doing less work and having a more prestigious name for their video card and having something that just works out of the box. That's it for the sales data. So overall, what we've learned here is that for the most part, across the uh, thousands of data points that we have for our audience, NVIDIA is very clearly in the lead and in a bigger way than something like the Steam hardware survey would sometimes suggest because that also splits out the market into IGP. So Intel has representation there, which is not really what we're talking about when we talk about GPU market share. So uh, yeah, NVIDIA is in a very good position. It remains in a good position to the extent that in the period when the 1080 Ti was available, it, it was the most popular card and it was roughly $700 to $800, depending on how high end of a model you bought. $700 was about the floor, ignoring the mining. And that's another point here. The mining boom, when it lasted, was actually significant. So when we were looking through data, and we didn't break this out for charts, but when we were crawling through all the data, what we noticed was in the months where Bitcoin price was rising from, it was roughly uh, $700, something like that, beginning of 2017, end of 2016, when it was rising to the the precipitous drop that it would eventually encounter at 20,000 or so, uh, circa December of 2017. During that rise, we noticed that a lot of the individual orders were going from single video card to things like eight video cards. So you'd have uh, in the past, what we, or even present, what we typically see is maybe uh, every so often you'll see a, a two card order. Maybe someone's doing SLI or Crossfire. But for the most part, every single order of a video card is an individual card. And then when that was going on, almost every order was multiple cards and the single card orders fell off and the prices also went up. So the problem here is that you end up with a market where gamers are getting priced out. Many of you probably remember this. Uh, you have to buy lower end cards if you want one at all or used cards, which was also difficult because mining was getting really popular at that time. And uh, this hurt AMD, we think, based on our data, more than it hurt NVIDIA in terms of the gaming market share because AMD was really getting sales to those mining operations. And whether that was direct from AMD or through their partners, we're not sure, or even their distributors. But what we do know through backroom conversations at trade shows with companies we can't name that work with AMD uh, is that a lot of those companies during the uh, the 2017 timeline of cryptocurrency rising, a lot of those companies were bypassing retail and just selling straight to mining operations. And so you end up with this situation where just like in our charts, 
That data is not accounted for. We don't know what the mining operations bought. They don't buy retail typically for the really big ones. And also, AMD starts uh, losing to a greater degree than NVIDIA market share in the gaming space, which obviously affects things like how games are optimized for different video cards and what, what type of uh, special features are used on those cards. NVIDIA started with more market share, so it really was in a better place when the, the, the mining came around and priced out gaming audiences. Um, so uh, just, just strictly in terms of market share, because if you're looking at gaming market share, the game creators are going to optimize based on video card distribution in that market, not based on video card distribution in the mining market. So anyway, a very interesting series of years. The mining stuff probably deserves a bit more of a deep dive, but um, we'll see. We'll see if, we, if it's worth digging the data out. Otherwise, I'm positive there are plenty of cryptocurrency channels out there that covered it when it was going on. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more as always. Thank you for watching. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly. The mod mats are officially back in stock and shipping. So you can pick one up there if you would like a medium or a large version. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to gain access to our behind the scenes videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.